Hello, welcome to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith. I'm Deacon Jody Moscona. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about a new ministry in the Diocese of Baton Rouge called the Women's Giving Circle. And I'm so excited to have two wonderful ladies here with us today to talk about it. It's Donna St. Cyr and Laura Poche. Laura's an old friend of mine from way back when. So this is like getting back together in a sort of kind of crazy <laughs> way on TV. Not so <laughs> so wel welcome to the show. Thank you. So um, before we get into the Women's Circle, just tell us a little bit about, you know, what parish you're in, you know, that, the usual stuff. Okay. Um, so my husband and I uh, go to church at Christ the King. We are uh, longtime Baton Rougeans, not native. Since we came to college, we met at Christ the King. We were formed there, and uh, after our ch we moved after all of our children um, got out of school, and we physically moved our house and decided we would go back and support the Ministry of Evangelization to Youth because it's really important to us. And um, I'm just trying to be faithful and love the people God puts in front of me every so day. So you know that was my first assignment as a deacon, Christ, Christ the King. King. Yes. So it's close to my heart, too, mm -hmm. in a different different kind of way, but a similar kind of way. So, And Laura? Yeah, well, uh, my husband and I are members of St. Aloysius Parish, mm -hmm. um, although we do attend Mass at Christ the King and other places throughout the diocese. Yeah, when you have to go to Mass at 10 o'clock at night, right? <laughs> uh, right, one, one of those, right? Yeah, yeah time, time options are very nice. Uh, we have three sons, and um, our oldest son now is actually a teacher um, of religion at Catholic High School here in Baton Rouge. Awesome. Yes, um, our middle son, um, he is just now returning from a, a trip. Uh, he's been doing that ACE program, I think through maybe oh, yeah. one of your sons oh, yes. did through Absolutely. Notre Dame University, Absolutely. and will become a, an employee there. And, uh, and our baby is actually up at Notre Dame now because he's discerning the priesthood oh, with the Congregation of Holy Cross. At Morrow Cross. Seminary. At Morrow Seminary, yes. I know it well. I had one discern there. He, I remember. It's a, it's a long story. He I discerned remember. himself out. <laughs> That's another whole story. We don't recommend that for, for I had one discern himself out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the purpose of discernment, exactly, yeah. you know, to know whether you're supposed to be there or not. So, so listen, I saw that um, I saw that the women's giving circle uh, is up and run. There's a promo from the diocese about it. It's a formal ministry of the diocese. Tell us a little bit how it started. I know uh, you and Bonnie started it. Yeah, I have a very good friend, Bonnie Mart, and um, I did not know, but women's giving circles are actually a thing all across the country. And she's originally from New Orleans. All her sisters still live in New Orleans. And she was a member of the New Orleans Archdiocese Women's Giving Circle. Oh, cool. And one day she was getting ready to write her check and she thought, well, I live in Baton Rouge. Let me see if I can just join the Baton Rouge Giving Circle. And Baton Rouge didn't have a giving circle. So she thought about it and prayed about it and called me up and said, I really think God's calling me to do this. She said, what do you think? I said, if God's calling you, you have to do it. <laughs> no and choice. Then she said, oh, I knew you'd say that. And then she waited. I said, and if you have to do it, I will be your wingman. So she said, that's all I need. And um, then we <laughs> started to meet with the Archdiocesan Circle leadership. And um, the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau also has a giving circle. We met with the lady in charge there, and we met with the diocese here, and Gwen Fairchild's office decided, oh, this is a good thing, and yes, let's take it to the bishop. And the bishop said, we're good, let's do it, and that's how it started. That's fantastic. That is really, and by the way, Gwen Fairchild is now the stewardship director, for those that don't know, you know. Yeah, sometimes, she's fantastic. Yeah, sometimes we throw names out there, and we assume everybody that's watching right. knows, but... Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, now how did you rope this pretty lady in? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, we have connections. Um, our Two of our sons uh, played soccer together when they were very young. And so, you know, we've crossed paths many times over, over the years. And um, even though we've never been in the same church, done the same mm -hmm. ministries, I would say um, we've um, worked toward the same goals. And um, when we got started, we just started with what we knew. Uh, I... We were St. Jude parishioners for a long time, and Bonnie is a St. Jude parishioner, so we started with our friends at St. Jude. And this really is a ministry of relationship. You know somebody that you think might be interested, and you talk to them about it. So we started to branch out from there, and we were coming along, but we weren't setting the world on fire, spreading our message. And uh, 
I identified Laura as a person who might be interested in this because A, she's very spiritual, and B, she's very philanthropic. So I reached out to her, and lo and behold, she said, yes, I hear God calling. Yes, and exactly. um, the rest is history because Laura <laughs> is such a go-getter and uh, does have the ability to make people see the value of an enterprise. Mm -hmm. And um, she brought a ton of people into yeah. the circle. Oh, yeah. Good. Before we get in that part, tell us about the Women's Giving Circle. You know, what, it, what is it about? You know, what does it do? And, uh, you know, I've read all the missions, say, so I kind of right. know, but you got to okay. tell them. Okay. <laughs> exactly. exactly. All right. You want to yeah. take that? I'll take it over, okay. I think. Okay. okay. You correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Uh, so, well, Donna and Bonnie actually came up with our tagline, Jody, and it's great. It's give, give pray, pray, bless. Now, the thought behind that is, through the power of giving um, of all ladies throughout the Baton Rouge Diocese, um, we are able to pool our money, identify um, certain charities and nonprofits throughout our community that really um, um, serve the ministry of our area of focus. This year, our uh, area of focus is ministry to youth. Um, and so there is a grants committee and there's a steering committee. And so we, we try to have kind of a governance model. But the purpose is, is to really educate our members on um, all of the great nonprofit work that's done in order to serve our community. Um, and many times I think women, I know women want to give back, uh, but how do we go about doing it? Well, this is a very, very easy way. Um, so by becoming a member, um, you know, you take, um, take part in three events that we have in the spring. And what are our events? Uh, mass uh, at one of our local uh, churches, followed by uh, either sip and learn or some type of little social event. I will tell you in our inaugural year last year, do you realize that this is right on the end of COVID? So can I tell you just the idea of having 140 <laughs> women together, um, it, it was wonderful. And, and we saw the power um, of pooling our money together in order to be able to address um, things that are near and dear to our heart and educating ourselves. So um, I, I am, was just thrilled by first being invited to be the, um, the chair of our steering committee for this year. Um, with our goal this year um, is to really bring in members to be able to donate and give at least $100,000. Um, and then we pray upon it. We have a voting process that all of our ladies take, um, uh, take part in. It's all done virtually. So it's not even a, a big time commitment. You mm -hmm. just have to hop on your computer and vote, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then everything culminates with um, all of the membership being able to see the grantees that we have bestowed these gifts on mm -hmm. where we bless the community. So it's really full circle. And um, I, I've been really blown away by the testimonials I received from members from last year. Number one, had they not been a part of this, they would have never, ever known about some of the great work that's being done. And the fact that they can play a small part in it uh, just makes everything so worthwhile. That's fantastic. So um, one of the things that touched me as you were talking is that so many ladies um, have big hearts, but they're so busy, you know, because they're dealing with kids or sometimes grandkids or sometimes working and doing a house. And it just ladies. And I tell my bookkeeper all the time, women run the world. They really do, you know, yes, and if do. you don't think women run the world, wake up because women run the world. But sometimes they don't get the sense of satisfaction that they are running the world, you know, mm -hmm. because they don't see what they're doing manifested in blessings. And right. y'all are giving those women an outlet, which we is are. just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we're also giving them the opportunity to have fellowship I will say that the majority of the members of the circle um, are older, <laughs> not elderly, just older. We're, we're older than we yeah. used to be, right? And, you know, when you have kids and the kids are in school and they're still at the house, you spend the majority of your time, your ministry time, your recreational time in things that involve your own children. But then mm -hmm. your children get up and move away. And sometimes your world can become a little smaller when that happens. But this gives women the opportunity to continue to reach out to other people that they might not 
ordinarily be reaching out to, aside from the fact that it gives them the chance to see ministries they might want to get involved in and they might want to volunteer for, but if they don't have the time to, they can still participate, answer God's call to give, and feel good about the work that the circle is doing. That is just fantastic. You know, um, many of us know about tithing, but we don't know that it's tithing and giving. You know, we're mm -hmm. called to tithe to our parish, but we're also called to give in a lot of ways. And many of us see that as works of charity and all that. But in a large sense, that can be financial. Absolutely. Right. And that's, that's another um, benefit, I think, that the ministry has. I thought about this this morning. I hadn't thought about it for a very long time. When I was a little girl, and I'm probably dating myself, our home church had little tiny offertory envelopes for the kids, right? And my, you know, we had allowances every week, like a dollar, a dollar a week. And so my parents would give us our money and they would expect us to put a dime or a quarter in that envelope for when we went to church. Mm -hmm. And so from the time I was very young, the, the habit of giving was made important to me. And it's mm -hmm. always been important to me. And I think one of the things that we do in the circle is that if a woman has the means and is called to, we ask her to give more than the required donation to be to be a circle partner and to sponsor someone younger who might not mm -hmm. yet be at the point where they can give that much money. And this teaches the whole concept of giving and philanthropy to the next generation because um, that's not always, you know, that doesn't always come through. Um, can I share a quick story sure. to that point? Yeah. Um, so one of the testimonials I was referring to, there's a lady um, on the steering committee this year. She's a, a young mother. Um, she was not able to, you know, afford, you know, with her budgetary uh, needs, uh, wasn't able to afford the buy-in. But, for example, one of our ladies sponsored her. Well, because she was blown away by all of the, you know, people that she met, uh, the information that she learned, her dad heard this, and her dad told her, next year, your mother, your sister, you, and each of you will get to invite a friend. I will sponsor all six of you. So what I'm saying is that, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the Lord provides, yeah. and, and it was just because she was so moved, and she has paid it forward in a different way, and mm. it gets her whole family involved, and, and that's, just, that's just really wonderful. Wow, that is... Absolutely awesome. Listen, we're going to take a short break in a minute. We're talking to the ladies that are part of the Women's Giving Circle, which is a new up and running ministry in Baton Rouge. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into it right after we get through a short break. So stay with us. We'll be right back. I had to leave my parents. I had to move schools. I don't know anyone here. Everything keeps changing. Why is this happening to me? I'm sure glad you're here. Change a child's story. There's a child in foster care waiting for a volunteer like you. Serving the poor, the marginalized, and the vulnerable is something that we should all care about. So the diocese is introducing a new ministry, the Women's Giving Circle. Let's hear from Donna St. Cyr and Bonnie Mart, the founders of this new mission. We are creating a community inside our diocese of Catholic women who are going to be dedicated to prayer and to sharing. We basically do three things. We give our resources, we pray, to see where God wants us to use them. And then we bless other people by funding nonprofits anywhere in the diocese that are going to meet the needs of the body of Christ. We give, pray, and bless. Through faith sharing, working together, and pooling our resources, the Women's Giving Circle promotes philanthropy. Philanthropy that glorifies God, empowers women, and calls us all to action. Membership is open to all women of the Diocese of Baton Rouge. To learn more about how you can join the Women's Giving Circle, please visit us at www.diobr.org slash WGC.
Welcome back to Catholic Life, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Faith, and two of those people with extraordinary faith are with us today. Listen, before the break, you were given a great story, and I know you got some more, but we're going to let them wait for the stories. And what I want to what I want to focus on now is the expansion of the women's circle, because what y'all what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's been focused kind of around Baton Rouge and maybe Denham, because you have to start with a core. But it's a it's a it's a ministry of the whole diocese. So we go all the way across the river. We go all the way down to the Bayou. We go all the way to Hammond. You know, wouldn't you like to just expand it, and give all those women a chance? Yes. Yes, we absolutely would. And um, we want to reach out to every single church parish in the Diocese of Baton Rouge. And we also want to reach out and find ministries that we can help to bless with the funding in mm -hmm. all of these far-flung places in the diocese. But, um, you know, you do what you know. And when we first started, here we are in Baton Rouge, so we just keep going out a little further, a little further. Mm -hmm. And of the charities that we were able to fund last year, there were a couple out in Denham Springs that I had never heard of. And so now um, I know about them and I can help them if I have the time or the resources to. One was Grandparents Raising Grandchildren, which is um, this really small coalition of people who help grandparents who all of a sudden get their grandchildren back and are not prepared for it, but are ready to take on that responsibility. And another one, um, which I just loved is called Braveheart, Children in Need, and it attends to the needs of children in the foster care system. And children get booted out of the foster care system at um, 18 without any support. And one of the things among many that Braveheart does is to provide financial support to help them set up a household, teach them how to become an adult if they don't have any family to go to, and often they don't. So uh, we want to reach all the women and all the ministries in all parts of the diocese. That's one of the reasons we're here talking to you. <laughs> That's fantastic. So the way that you can help with that is if you are in one of the re more remote areas outside of the immediate Baton Rouge or Denham area, know that this is a way for you to reach out to, to the circle by looking at the contact information, which we'll put on the screen, you know, email them or, or con go to the website, do any of these kind of things to reach out to them so that they you can reach reciprocate reach back to them also uh, if you're in a parish out there communicate it to your pastor or to anybody in your parish especially if you have um you know maybe catholic daughters something mm -hmm. like that you know that would be a great way to do it too so expansion expansion is is the key jody yeah. um, in fact you know we are attempting through the bulletins throughout uh, you know, throughout the, the diocese uh, to maybe have one of our little flyers out there in order to be able to reach all of the, you know, uh, parishes down the bayou, so to speak. Um, and I, I think it's just so important that, you know, ladies like doing stuff with ladies. So, you know, if this is something that piques your interest, call a friend. You know, the more the merrier. I mean, truly. And, um, you know, a lot of our ladies, uh, because of either their work or family obligations last year, were not able to attend all of our events. But you know what? They, they were able to give, okay, to, towards the pool, as well as vote on the ministries in order to, for us to bless those ministries, two of which Donna just mentioned. So, so there's many, many different ways that you can get involved. Um, and from a time commitment standpoint, it is slim to none because I can tell you this particular lady, um, you know, everybody, a lot of other ladies are pulled in so many different directions. Um, and I just found that um, because this is so well run, you know, thanks in part to Donna and Bonnie's efforts and their vision, um, that all you need to do is um, say you want, you want in and uh, the resources will be provided and, um, and you will get to meet a lot of ladies and learn a lot about the nonprofit work done in our diocese. And what I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that if you're in a, uh, an area more remote and you're part of it, you get to coordinate your ministries of interest into the pool to be considered, right. to be blessed yes. by the yes. funds that are given by the, the conglomerate of all the ladies. Right. So it's a two-way street. That's you, right. you, your, your area can, can benefit through the blessings. Right. So at the end of the year, we did um, a survey, and one of the questions on the survey was, what types of ministries do you want to see us mm -hmm. 
bless next year. And you know, everyone who answered had an opinion. And we have a grants committee, and anybody can volunteer for the grants committee. And their job is to go out and find nonprofits that minister to the body of Christ, and they bring those back to the circle. So anyone from anywhere can make a suggestion to the grants committee, and then um, they put that all together and then mash it down to a, um, a reasonable number that mm -hmm. we're going to consider for the year. So yes. That is fantastic. Yes, and Jody, even to, you know, to kind of towards Donna's point, you can imagine there are so many people doing great work. But last year, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that the Grants Committee narrowed our focus down to 20 organizations, okay? And through this voting process, which is very easy, even if you have no you know, computer skills whatsoever, it's very easy, um, the membership got to narrow it down to five. Okay, so so all of that is done on your own time. It's not requiring that you meet, um, have subcommittee meetings. It's 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 not anything yeah. like that. It, uh, so so you're learning at the same time that you're participating. And in the end of I think the five charities that we ultimately narrowed it down to, every charity was blessed um, with a certain monetary award. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah. And so what happened? Our second. Our second uh, gathering is called a sip and learn. We have mass, we pray. And then the finalists that the circle voted on are invited to come and make a presentation so that you, if you're there, you can learn in person. If you're not there, we send the information out to you. Um, and the membership can then ask questions of the representatives who wow. are there. And then the membership votes again and all of the finalists get money. But the, um, you know, how the money is divvied up depends on how the ladies vote. So really, it's it's very democratic. <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah. And there's a social component. Yeah, Absolutely. that's important. Which is really you know? important, because yeah. ladies want to hang around with ladies. Absolutely. Yeah. What yeah. I hear, anyway. Well, <laughs> yes, the older they get, the more they want to hang around with ladies. <laughs> but, I um, love it. But, you know, uh, fellowship is important, and uh, we can, you know, our relationship with God goes two ways, up and out. and. Uh, we can work on that up component by ourselves, but we have to have other people to work on being part of the body of Christ. And that's what I think is so beautiful about this is that it helps us to get that component when uh, we might otherwise not right. be able to. I, I love the way you put that because, you know, we weren't put here in a vacuum. We put here to be community. Right. You had a story you wanted to share. You got to tell did. us about it. I yeah. did. Um, well, one of the other ladies who volunteered to serve on the steering committee for this year, um, she I'll just say she's in her 80s, okay? And a longtime member of a church parish, um, not very computer literate. At first, when she heard about it, she said, you know what, this may not be for me because this is, uh, you know, for those uh, computer savvy ladies. Um, I don't even know how to communicate that way. Um, she did have a cell phone, but a flip phone, okay? So it's not even like text. <laughs> Wait, those are back in, by the way. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. the, the dumb <laughs> phone, the dumb phone to get yeah. out of the smartness of, yeah. the, of our society, I guess. But in any event, um, but she said, you know what, though, um, something was just telling me that I had to attend, and um, her church parish uh, is Our Lady of Mercy, uh, and she happened to um, attend that particular event that we had last year, um, and Father Paul Yee was the celebrant who sang beautifully, mm -hmm. and and my goodness, um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you're not driven to God by listening to Father Paul, I don't know what, what it takes, but in any event, um, she was just overwhelmed with, um, as she said, kind of like the Holy Spirit, and she says, look, um, you know, I might not be able to do a lot of computer work, but I'm a great greeter, and I can give out name tags, and I can talk to ladies. And as a result, um, she said that she's called a lot of her friends on the landline, okay, <laughs> uh, and told them that this is something that they really need to participate in because, uh, you know, in, in her situation, she was able to make the donation, the give. Um, her part was, am I going to be able to participate in this with everybody else? And she soon learned she can. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very inclusive, Jody, and um, and that's what I'm so excited about. You know, young and old, in between, up and down the bayou is what we're looking for. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's the reason why Donna put me in this dubious uh, position of steering <laughs> steering this boat uh, or this circle, <laughs> this circle for another year. Uh, and the more, the merrier. You are in the right seat on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's right. <laughs> Okay. You gotta have the right people in the bus and have them in the right seat. Absolutely. And you're in the right seat. <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, one of the things that is encouraging is that this is something that 
everybody can participate in, no matter where you are in the diocese. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, um, let me just encourage you to get that contact information, contact the, the Women's Circle, and let's see how big we can make this thing. Yeah, well, let's yes. see how big God can make this thing because Amen. from from the beginning, uh, Bonnie and I were like, God, this is your enterprise. You know, we want it to be X, but if yeah. you want it to be Y, well, okay, it is up to you. So I would mm -hmm. just say, Love pray, that. ask the Holy Spirit what God wants you to do, mm -hmm. and then um, if you hear the call, come on down and join us. Give, pray, and bless. Give, pray, there bless. Yes. So we got a couple more minutes. Um, what what I'm touched by is, as a person in a parish, what we can do is we can put the notice in the bulletin, mm -hmm. and we can just promote it, and everybody out there can promote it. Mm -hmm. Everyone can. And this is really a, it's a relational ministry, so that's the best way to promote it. Hey, come on, let's do this together. That's right. I think you would like to do this with me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and I, I do know that our Catholic daughters are very active, and I think this is right. I don't want to speak for them, but I think mm -hmm. this is kind of right up their alley. And I don't know how many parishes out there have Catholic daughters, but that certainly should be somewhere to, to We have. To. Uh, we just had our impact uh, gathering where we watched a video from the um, nonprofits that we funded last year, and one of the ladies came up to me and said, "You know, I'm ex in the Catholic daughters, and we're going to we're going to try to see if we can uh, get them to Great come on minds along." Think alike. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Liz, I just want to say that um, I'm touched, and I hope all of you are touched by um, this from the perspective of um, a lot of women think they're excluded for whatever reason. This is very inclusive. I just love that. I just think this is a way for all women to feel like there's something that they can do. And Y'all are doing a wonderful job wonderful thing with this and uh, I'm glad that y'all came on the show so that those people that are watching can have a glimpse under the tent and then lift it up and see what it's about and go in the tent. Great, so, great. It's so, a big tent. So yeah, It's a big tent. It really mm -hmm. is. So uh, I, all I can do is uh, encourage you to uh, look further at it and if you're not a lady and you're a guy, tell your lady. Yes, <laughs> Or your yes, daughter or whoever, yes. you know. Just spread the word because that's how this yes. this it's going. So thank you all so much for coming in and sharing this great uh, ministry with us. Thank you. Thanks for giving and us thank, the opportunity. And thank you for joining us today on Catholic Life. I'm so glad that you were able to get this information. We're so glad to bring it to you. Till next time, God bless everyone. Mm -hmm.